The following podcast is intended for mature audiences. If you enjoy our work, please like, comment, subscribe, and follow the links in the description. Thanks for your support, and enjoy. Greetings and salutations, listeners. I, Eric J. Chucky, joined, as always, by my fellow slinger of dice, the boy. Hey. This is the Two Nerds Podcast. Before we get started on this fine day, um, check down in the description. Uh, my good buddy Danger Mark has a blog um, about rugby and that sort of thing. If you're interested in that sort of thing, he's a very witty fellow, so I recommend you check it out. Mark is generally one of the wittiest writers I've ever read of things. He tones it down because he likes to deliver a lot of facts in his blog, but yeah, he's a clever guy. If you want hard-hitting recaps and previews with a little bit of staff... And you're into the sports kid ball, that specific flavor. Uh, but let's let's move on into new business, which is old business, as it always is here on the Two Nerds Podcast. The cutting edge is not where we live. We're... We're two gentlemen of size, and we like to live comfy. Back from the edge a little bit. Yeah, where it's not so scary. So, <clears throat> we're going to be talking about something we did, and sorry about the cough, I'm still kind of under the weather. Um, well, see, the, the listener loves us and respects us, and knows that sometimes, as, you know, beings with organs and whatnot, we have to go, <coughs> or whatever. Right. Um, well, recently-ish... We were down a member of the nerd squad, and thus had to make do for several weeks at a time. One of us was on business, uh, Brandy specifically. So we made do and started playing a couple different other role-playing games, aside from our usual rotation of like ongoing campaigns. Um, most of the, uh, you know, they, they were fairly normal, with the exception of one that, um, I believe we've named him on the podcast before, Dave. David. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh Game Master Problems, that's G-A-Y-M-A-S-T-E-R. Um, uh, Google that, you should find him. He is, he ran for us while we, he's the other member of our game group, me, Brandy, White here, and him. <laughs> um, hey, I'm group, I'm not so group. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he decided to run a game in a system neither of us had ever played. Because he thought we'd really enjoy it, we really enjoy the character creation and such. It's called Beyond the Wall and Other Adventures. It's from Flatland Games. If you literally Google Beyond the Wall RPG, you have to put RPG, otherwise you get a series of Game of Thrones stuff. I got Beyond the Wall the RPG. Yeah, nice. Um, you get this. It's like the first, second, and third link. I would check it out. Yeah, you can get it at RPG Drive Through if you guys uh, frequent that area. Ultimo, I know you are a thrower of dice as well. Because Ultimo Dragon's cool in so many ways. He's all things. He is all things to all people. At all times. Mm -hmm. Except when he's sleeping, then leave him alone. Because he gets very grumpy if you try and wake him up. Mm -hmm. He will fucking arm drag your ass off. Which is hard, considering it starts from your arm. Not for him. No, because he's Ultimo Dragon. And we circle back around. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but it was actually super fun. The care and I mean... Beard was right. The character creation was really fun. Uh, beard being his um, nickname because he has a beard uh, and because he has an uncanny resemblance to uh, Gerard Khalil Dragon Rider, uh, the completionist. Is his actual last name Dragon Rider? No, that I think it's his nickname. I was really, Unless it's his actual last name. Really fucking hoping. And then he's like... The, the coolest, coolest motherfucker, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, he, um, I, I fucked it up a bit because I, 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 you know, I don't know. I asked a question, but yeah, beyond the wall is a very traditional fantasy setting, perhaps even more traditional than you're used to. Lots of dealings with Fae and, uh, that sort of thing. More like a fairy tale setting, I would say. Yeah. It's very, I like archetypal. It's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's designed to tell. Fables yes. more than like your standard fantasy fair yeah, story. Yeah, than like high fantasy, you know, swordsman saves the world sort of shit. Sword and sorcery. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, the character creation is randomized to a certain extent. 
Uh, but not like Palladium Games makes randomized, where you can be anything from, you know, a god MI to full-blown retard. Uh, no, all the stuff that's randomized is, I mean, it's usually pretty based around, like, flavor. And there's, you know, minor mechanical pluses and minuses attached, but it still leaves you fairly open to play the character you want to play. Yeah, it gives you a lot of stuff uh, into your origin. And, and you can pick your class, um, and, like, one other thing. And then uh, you just roll off a bunch of shit, and it's like, oh, your dad was this person, or, oh, you found this artifact, and it, it had this effect on you. And um, there's even portions of the character creation, which I really, really <coughs> love which were designed to give you a small mechanical bonus and give the other, one of the other people in the group another mecha a mechanical bonus and tie your stories together. Now, it was only the two of us playing, so it, it just, like, made us into battle bros. Yeah, which was pretty cool. Um, I ended up asking uh, what, what the setting of his campaign was, and he's like, I don't know, it's pretty general fantasy. And I was like, so would it be out of the question for me to be, like, uh, a Mongolian tribesman or something? And he was like, uh, I mean... If you want. Um, but he ended up running with it, and the whole campaign became this sort of nomadic, like, uh, steps-people-based thing. It became like a nomadic, steps-people-like mythic tale. Yeah. the kind, And that's and that it feels very much like what Beyond the Walls int intended for, because the storytelling and, and the way he was going about the campaign was re really felt like... The kind of thing you would hear told around a campfire, with, sure, like big overarching actions and and heroes, which who aren't always the most morally upright, but um, are driven and he adhere to their morals. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I I really enjoyed it. Uh, I believe it was pretty much just D twenty after the care gen. Um, like, yeah, but toned down quite a bit. Yeah, it was really oversimplified, and not in a bad way, just, like, just streamlined. to the extreme. Simple. Um, well, I'd say 5th edition is, like, D&D &D simplified. 5th edition like, is D&D &D optimized. Sure. I, look, listener, I fucking love 5th edition. I'm yeah. not even gonna lie. I'm not even gonna try and be like, yeah, the game was better when I started playing. No, I started playing in 2nd edition. 2nd edition was ass. Um, Still got love for you, Tui. You're the only motherfucker. It's advanced, Mark. And that too, means it's better. It's too advanced for me, okay? <laughs> I'm too much of a scrub lord. I need it simplified. I need it made good instead no, of I, 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 I do love 5th edition. It's probably the... Most easily accessible and purest form of D&D. &D. Uh, Grognards hate it because you can't be a rules lawyer. and um, Everyone else loves it for the exact same reason. <laughs> um, it's, but, and that's kind of what we want to talk about this week, is just various role-playing game systems. Yeah, basically. Because in this household, um, for better or for worse, we generally adhere to the system I designed. Uh, which sounds like I'm on this huge ego trip, but trust me when I say this, listener, I've tried to get them to play other stuff. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. Fuck you. He's not on an ego trip. I'm on an ego trip for him. It's really fucking good. I can say it, and unfortunately, listener, you cannot buy it at the moment. It's not. It's in between editions at the moment. I tell you what, if you can buy it, it'll be in that link in the description. Yeah, <laughs> if they like old editions still on the shelf Check or whatever. Check there, and if you don't see the books... Buy some of the other stuff you find. Uh, maybe buy some of the, uh, the, novels. the the novels because the setting for the RPG is based around the novels, and it's look. I can say it because I'm not him. It's hands down my favorite role playing game system. There's it's nothing else is even close. It's not even a question. But I kind of like it. It's okay. But that doesn't that doesn't mean that I don't love other RPGs. You sure. Know? Yeah. No. It's just hard to. It's like, hey, let's try this out, and, and or, the response is generally. Eh. Or we could just play it in cold instead. <laughs> um, which would be fine, except that when it comes to man, I sure would like a different setting than the setting of cold. I have to go. Well, time to make it from raw material, and uh, that slows down the the onus to start a new campaign a lot. But uh, I did play a lot of systems before um, we became a nerd unit. Um, whereas I have played comparatively few. I've read a bunch, 
but I've only played a couple. Most of the non D and D ones after I met you. Mm -hmm. um, I actually got my real role playing start uh, because I did play some uh, first edition, if you want to call it that, the blue box uh, D and D back in the day. Uh, but, he's he when he was a kid, not back when it was out. He's not that old. Yeah, I, I'm from the seventies. Um, <laughs> I am a traveler of time and space. Uh, <clears throat> so, but we only had the um, the DM's guide, so there's only so much you can do. Well, and my friend had played D and D before, but he did his best, and I, I homebrewed a couple of things, horribly unbalanced, but. Um, when I really got my start role playing, I was in high school, freshman year. I picked up Vampire the Masquerade. This was, I believe, second edition. Which um, is really just the perfect RPG for a high school freshman. Sure. Especially the goth kid who hangs out in the basement with his weird friends who nobody likes. I mean, you couldn't have played, you couldn't have played any more into the stereotype. No, yeah. Um... The right down to the the pretty normal guy who plays, you know, like Gangrel and and Bruja and shit. Uh and the weird weeb asshole who played Malkavian as an excuse to act chaotic stupid. Which is a part of every vampire group as far as I've been able to tell. Sure. And then the uh militaristic shut in. Uh, who played whatever vampire could have the most guns and resist the most damage. Um, good times, old high school. You you kids out there, the smaller Ultimo Dragons in the audience, will often hear uh, adults say, man, high school, these are the best years of, the, of your life. No, they fucking aren't. Those people are either lying or sad. High school sucked. High school, high school sucked stupid. on toast. Every single day of my life has been better than high school, since high school. You know what I could do right now while I'm recording this podcast on a computer that I own with software that I obtained legally, not even joking at this point, um, I could stop this podcast, I could get in my vehicle, I could drive to the gas station, I could purchase $50 worth of crap from the gas station, drive back home, and the only thing I would have to deal with in the morning was my wife going, why did you do that? We could have gone 10 more minutes and gotten it for half price. <laughs> <laughs> or gone to the grocery store and gotten way more. It's You were inefficient. And I'm allowed to be because I'm a grown-ass adult. After this podcast is over, I'm going to go get some fucking ice cream and eat it at 4 in the morning. Who going to stop me? Fucking nobody. That's fucking who. nobody, that's who. High people, school's dumb. People who told you high school were the best years of your life are one of two things. Lying or sad. Because... Like, I've had, I've had bad times since I became an adult. I think everyone has. That's not a secret. Everyone's had a bad day. Few people have had to fight the snake bull of Taroma. Well, I don't like to talk about that um, because it makes me sound like I'm way cooler than I am. Sure. I beat him mostly by luck. That's fair. That's fair. Um, but it's... I don't care. I would never go back. Mm -hmm. You couldn't pay me enough money. It's good to have your friends on hand like that. <clears throat> constantly forced to go to the same place as you and give as little fucks as you do about that place. Creates camaraderie. Sure. But um, at the same time, all that other shit. Uh, but we're getting kind of off topic here. I mean, I don't know what's more intrinsic to role-playing games than the pressures of being weird in high school. Uh, but uh, different systems and stuff. Um, <coughs> I will say that... I, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, please. Um, I really enjoy Mutants and Masterminds. I think it's actually an incredibly well-designed system. Probably the best design system for what it's for. I haven't played it much, but boy howdy would I like to play more of it. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it reminds me of Mass Effect 1 in that Penny Arcade fashion. Swim forever? Yeah, just, you, you kind of, they give you the book and they tell you how to use it, I, to be perfectly fair, but... Once you turn to that page and you're like, all right, my powers are fuck. It it has a lot of choice paralysis involved, but I, that doesn't that's never been a problem for me, really. So it's I'd love to play more mutants and masterminds because I like superheroes and I think a superhero RPG game would be fun. And to date, none of the ones that have been tried in the two nerds household have gone very far. Uh for a variety know, of reasons. Yeah. 
I just don't really like playing superhero RPGs, I guess, which makes me a little sad because I like superheroes. Y'all motherfuckers listen to this podcast. You know. You know. <laughs> it's not a secret. But uh, what were you going to say? Uh, well, I'm just going to say I think my, maybe the, the best role-playing game I've played, my favorite um, in terms of mechanics, <sighs> probably would have to be 5th edition D&D, man. Yeah, it's it's really really well designed. Um, I appreciate the ability of fourth edition to modify everything kind of on the fly. Fourth edition is the easiest thing to DM. Well, and even when it comes down to making up your own races and classes, I mean, it just slots so cleanly. It's because the mechanics are so unified and so clean, and there's no cruft anywhere. Whereas fifth edition has that. Light crust of nerd bullshit on top that sure. kind of has to be there. Well, or, or to put it into a less weird bakery metaphor y way. Um, I like baking stuff. What? Hey, no, I ain't judging. I like eating stuff. Uh, it's the tent poles, uh, the archetypes of Dungeons and Dragons, not just fantasy, but Dungeons and Dragons, are very well sculpted. And they give you a lot of different options within those archetypes. Unless you're a ranger. But then uh, the rest of the system is very freeform. Which is good. So if you wanted to sit down and build a class out of what they give you, you most certainly could. It's probably about as easy as it was in 3rd edition. But that being said, I mean, you do have to go through a lot more effort than... You know, oh, you wanted to be, like, a, a fire druid? Okay, all your druid powers do fire damage now. Who gives a shit? You wanted to be a bunch of Jedi? Guess what? Psionics? That's just force. Just use the word force. And it's, it works basically just... It works. Um, fourth edition's great if you're... If you want to play a campaign in a weird setting on the fly and you need to modify some shit really fast. I understand other systems use GURPS for that. Um, GURPS is garbage. I don't know if I'd go that far. I don't care for it. It's hot garbage. No, you've um, spoken like someone who's never played Palladium. Um, it's mediumly warm garbage then. Um, it, it, is, it is like paper trash or... <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's gonna leak gross garbage water on your foot when you take it out. It's not a fucking sack full of kitty litter. It's, but um, uh, the weird garbage metaphor has gotten away from us too. Dude, no, I don't think it has. I think I'm being very precise here about what fucking Palladium games are: garbage water and kitty litter. Um, gross. Um, <laughs> But, so, if I wanted to play, like, hey, we want to play a game in the Spin the Wheel Mass Effect universe, and we need to do it right now on the fly, and we want to play it tonight. Cool. Get the 4th edition books out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. It, it works. You want to be a soldier? Cool. You're a ranger now. You want to be a, a biotic? Uh, what kind? Adept? All right, you're this psionic class. Uh, you want to be uh, this? You're this. Done, done, done. It would be very simple. Done, done, done. And all the monsters are completely... Their mechanics are so well designed that I can just rip all the fluff off, paste a new fluff right on, and go about my merry fucking business. Yeah. If you're the least bit creative, 4th edition is so flexible. It's plug and play, dude. But for... For D&D, for specifically playing D&D in any D&D setting, 5th edition wins. And well, it's not... It's and not really that much of a contest. Fourth edition also has the problem that it's it's much more tabletop than other editions of D and D. Like, yeah, I fifth edition. I have a map because I'm the DM. I'm mm. the only one who's DMing an actual D and D campaign at the moment. Um, I'm supposed to be, but Brandy got back sooner than we thought. So, I, which is ironic because I love fifth edition so much as a player, and I love I've, I've got like six fifth edition characters. I'm not even exaggerating. You just fucking makes them. Um, just waiting, waiting to be played, and I've I've only ever played fifth edition like twice, like one session each game. Oh no, we played a couple sessions of my game. That's true. We played two sessions of that, and then two, two sessions of two other games. So I played it four times. Uh, <laughs> But, and that's because I would prefer to play cold. That's that's fully on me, not on anyone else. Mm. Um, 
but as as the DM, I keep a map because I need to know where they are in relation to other monsters. If they're in a dungeon, where they need where they are in relation to like various parts of the dungeon, traps, pitfalls, and shit like that. But the players don't need to. Yeah, it's like, am I in range of this? And the DM goes, sure. Whereas in fourth edition, no. And if you're above third level, you need that play map. There's so many movement powers that everybody needs to know where everybody is. Everybody needs to know where everyone is. You have to, it's very much a tactics game. Mm -hmm. It's almost a war game. Which, to be fair, is the origins of D&D, &D, so I can't get mad. No, I, I dig it a lot. It's just, it's a different flavor. It's a different beast. It's for yeah. different things. Uh, it's the difference and, between uh, Mountain Dew Classic and Mountain Dew Whiteout. Yeah, and as a bonus, the tactical bent and need to know where everyone is and prevalence of chest high walls um, would actually make it good for a Mass Effect RPG. I'm starting to sell myself on this concept, but I think I'm the only one who want to play it. Um, I would play it, but I mean, that's about... David will play it. <laughs> no. <coughs> David will play anything. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> He's worse than I am. He would play a fucking Palladium game if we asked. Okay. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. He would like sigh and be like, this is going to be a fucking train wreck. But he'd be like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> he'd be down for that train wreck. Fuck yeah. Um, yeah, I was going to I was gonna uh, counter that whole, I think my favorite system would be, my least favorite system is Palladium. Fuck Palladium. They have a lot of good ideas. Um, a lot like Slay Industries, which is my favorite uh, fluff. Um, I am probably going to, for personal use, convert Slay Industries into my homebrew rules just so I can just for play us. it. Just for us, not yeah. for sale, no, because that would that be illegal. Would be very illegal. <laughs> but you, I just love this. Sorry, guys, you wouldn't get it, but not uh, everything could be for you, listener. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, sorry. Sometimes those are those are me things. Those are inside thoughts. Um, but Palladium as a system is just fucking ass broke. They have great ideas. I would say that's the, yeah. Slay is the worst system I've ever actually played. Yeah, you know, it was Palladium very fucking. shitty. Like it was poorly designed. Okay, so the reason Slay Industries is poorly is a bad system is because it breaks down its combat into hyper realism, quote unquote. Everybody gets a. Oh my turn god! Do they actually say that? No, uh, but that's that's the way that's the mentality that goes into it because there's like every round has like seven turns in it, and depending on how fast you are, you have so many actions within that round. And it's, it's fucking, like, so fucking number crunchy. In a game with three players, I believe, um, and a DM, so not even a full party compliment, one fight took us three hours. And we just started. Yeah. I mean, like, and it wasn't fun. It wasn't like 4th edition right, where a roll. fight might take three hours, but All we're right, like, yes. oh, this is so epic. Yeah, it was just, no. All right, move on. <coughs> All right, roll. All right. But the, the races and the setting and the <clears throat> ideas are all really neat. And uh, Palladium has that too, because Palladium has, you know, stuff like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness, stuff like Nightbane. A lot of people like Rifts. I don't care for it, but uh, I can definitely see the appeal. Um, but Palladium does that hyper quote unquote realism everywhere. Gross. Yeah. That's something I've come to realize about myself as I've aged. I'm a grognard about some things, not about RPGs. Give me some crunch, enough to sink my teeth into, and that's all. I want my role-playing games, by and large, to be streamlined, to be... to have the rules not get in the way of the story. But... You can't go too far in the other direction. Well, and, you know, to be <clears throat> a bit less specific, let's not have the rules get in the way of the fun. <coughs> and, and vice versa. <coughs> um, too, too often, you know, especially when it comes to numbers. My, my system doesn't use numbers for damage. Um, long story. Buy the book when it comes out. <laughs> uh, actually, fuck, if you go down to my Patreon down there and subscribe, um, I will totally post stuff about my RPG there. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, now when I say stuff, I mean like chapters, races, the things I have done. Um, 
There's a lot of them. There's a fucking lot. But, uh, yeah, I don't use damage because too many times when I was playing games, um, we would get to that point in the night where everyone's a little tired but doesn't want to quit. And your fucking turn order would be, you know, fucking, okay, all right, six damage, cool, all right, okay, you take four damage, all right, I rolled a nine, that doesn't hit, okay, who's next on initiative? And it, even even if you spice that up and don't give it the fucking Ben Stein treatment, it's just a lot of numbers flying you, back and forth. You, it becomes spreadsheets and statistics, and that's yeah. not what I came to play. No, I mean, you know, even even if it's... Even if you break it down to that, that base component level, okay, Jim, you take severe damage to your chest or whatever. You know, that's at least more interesting than four. It's words. Human, the human brain is not designed to deal with numbers to a great extent. Well, and that's like that's one of those things that's still fucking, if I think about it too hard, I lose my mind about with D&D. What the fuck is a hit point? How do I realistically... Describe a hit point. I, okay, so now that I've gone from level 8 to level 9, I gained 10 hit points. What the fuck does that mean? Whereas with Cole, the only thing that has that is there's a kind of damage that kills you, and that kind of damage will kill you. If you resist the, the death part, it drops down to the next level of damage. So anytime you roll damage that would kill somebody, it's important not to describe the damage until they've already resisted it or not. Because that will mean the difference between them getting shot in the shoulder and blow, and their head blown off. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so, but aside from that, <clears throat> it's uh, it it has to do with how human because realistically they describe what a hit point is. A hit point sure, is, a combi- yeah. is a combination of your actual physical fortitude, <clears throat> how much damage you can actually take, <clears throat> and your ability to withstand damage, brace against it, dodge that sort of thing. If something hits your I do this in my head as a DM a lot, is if something hits a player's touch AC, but not their regular AC, you describe it as it bouncing off their armor or off their shield. If something just misses them entirely, then it misses entirely. If something hits and does like 5 damage, and they have like 50 hit points, it probably like hit their armor and jostled them a little bit, tired them out, but like didn't do any real harm. Well, But there's a lot of mental gymnastics involved in that. There's a lot of processing. Sure. And, like, on one hand, for that reason, I dig the uh, the Star Wars hit point system with vitality and wounds. But on the other hand, they took a good concept and implemented it really poorly. Yes. Especially because, and I get why, but especially because all Jedi cast their magic from hit points. Yeah. <clears throat> And for balance reasons, it makes sense, because it sharply curtails the power of your Jedi. But it's also dumb. Because I guarantee Yoda didn't have that many hit points in <laughs> Empire. And lifting an X-Wing, having done the math for that in the, in all the, star, in the star Wars RPGs I've played, not an easy check, okay? <laughs> um. So what about you? What's your least favorite? favorite? Was it Slay? I would say Slay's the worst, but I don't know that it was my least favorite. Yeah. But, like I said, I've only played, actually played, comparatively (laughs) few RPGs. I've read a bunch, but my judgment of them and their mechanics can only go so far because I haven't actually played them. Sure. Um, I mean, like, most systems are pretty similar. Uh, You either have your D20-esque system, um, your percentile dice system, like uh, a lot of the shit in um, Palladium Games and uh, Warhammer Fantasy. Paradoxically, because I just described it as you know not wanting the rules to get in the way of the fun, not wanting the rules to get in the way of the story, and this is the, and this is a system that does that really well. I think, from what I've read, having not played it, to be perfectly fair, my least favorite system mechanically and is Fate. Yeah. I just don't like it. It's just a little too fast and loose. It's just a little too far past that line. It's, it's, I was going to make a joke you guys won't get because you haven't gotten to that thing and another thing yet. Um, oh, that I wouldn't get? No, no, that it's past uh, the uh, the line. Oh, oh. Yeah. He's, he's talking about our secret sex tape. <laughs> Not that line. That we bought. 
from uh, what was that guy's name? I didn't really ask. This joke would be better. Uh, Man cow. Yeah, that guy. That guy who taped Hulk Hogan all those times. Gross. Um, I never want to see that. Me either. I read a review of it. <laughs> three of three of five stars. Poor camera work. I don't. I don't think he gave it a star rating. I think he found it fucking horrifying and mostly sad. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. but uh, I digress. Um, from, yes, from Hulk Hogan's penis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is fucking. This is my life. This is, this is life. my life. This is fucking life. My um, fuck. Then there's dice pool games like Vampire and and its ilk, the White Wolf games. I don't hate those, but I don't like them either. I think for people who like to roll a lot of dice, they might be ideal. I mean, and it's a dirt simple system, except for like three specific kinds of rolls. Which that's the case for everything. D and D is pretty simple. You want to grab somebody though? Yeah. Hey, no, you know, fifth edition's grapple rules real simple. <laughs> I got fucked by that uh, last night, uh, which is why he's making jokes. <laughs> I'm his DM. I'm allowed. Um, hey, I'm not the one who made you run into a crowd of dudes who all wanted to stop you from leaving. Uh, you are the one, however, who took away the magic when I was a wizard. What would I... Would you... Rat, no, what... You had, like... Mm. like I, I killed the guy anyway, so <laughs> it, it was fine. It worked out <laughs> My frustrations came to a gory climax. Um, I, uh, like, and combat. Combat isn't complicated, but it's fucking time-consuming. Because, you know, okay, I've got this many dice in strength, this many dice in martial arts, add those together, and I roll them against your stamina and your soak. All right, how many successes did we get after doing the math to subtract the dice from the dice? So you just want a big-ass box of Chessex then? I mean, yeah. And that's... I played a lot of Vampire, a little bit of Werewolf, one game of Hunter before my beloved cat, who is looking at me right now, peed on the book. Um, Good job, Spaz. But, uh, man, that's just not for me. Again, I really love your fluff, but I do not care much for your dice system. The New World of Darkness, actually, much more streamlined. Much better character creation, much better dice system, way more balanced. Don't like its fluff? Fucking hate its fluff. There I fucking go. hate the changes they made. I, I just, like, it's like they replaced all the cool vampire clans, all the cool werewolf. Actually, werewolf's still okay. But it's like they replaced all the cool shit with dumb shit they invented. Except for Changeling, which is actually cooler. Go fucking figure. That is weird. It's weird that that one's the cooler one. I'm not gonna lie. Um... I'm go. I would say firmly that I like. I never need to play a White Wolf game. If I want to play a game about vampire intrigue, I'll just use Colt and their vampire system, which is better. I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot to be said for the different kinds of vampires, like the different genres, if you will. And uh, intentionally, I when I made the Colt Vampire Nations, I tried to avoid overlap with the. White Wolf Vampire Clans. Because I don't want to get myself sued. And because you're not looking to rip anybody off. Well, sure, I mean, well, I'm, largely. Why do something again if it's already been done before? And well. Sure. I think the closest thing we have is the, the Sabrosa to the Ravnos. And even then... That's only, mostly an accident. Well, a, in name only kind of thing. I mean, it's like, yeah, they, they are thieves... That's about where it ends. Yep. Um, Sabrosa are weird. So are Ravnos. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Yeah. <clears throat> I got I guys to cough, man, and I ran out of juice. There's been a... There's a sickness going around the Tudor's household. Well, <clears throat> and even worse, like, the night before I actually got sick, uh, I was playing rock band. And, like, it was just normal-ass song. It was, like, pop, classic rock, good shit. And then, you know how Rock Band 4 works? Um, it, it, you Like, there's a selection thing that pops up after you finish a song. And it's like, okay, the band votes on one of these four songs. And I, 
I picked, I think, some classic rock or maybe some pop tune or something, something that would have been easy on my voice because we'd been playing for a while. And Brandy's like, let's let's do the beautiful people. So, of course, the little ticker goes, tick, 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 beautiful people. Fine. And, like, that shredded my throat. And then the next day I was fucking sick. So, like, I'm not sick anymore, but my throat is still fucked up. See, for me, it's just the fact that I have recurring problems with acid reflux. So once my once my body starts producing more stuff, like from being sick, more more nose and face fluids, gelatinous cubes. It doesn't basically. It doesn't want Booker to jelly. stop because my throat <laughs> no longer hurts. So. Um, uh, sometimes my knee acts up when the weather gets cold. <laughs> what we're saying here is. Uh, we're old. Yeah. We're falling apart. And it's still fucking better than high school. Uh, yeah. Like, even this, even old and falling apart, because seriously, once I hit 25, I'm not joking you, I, I felt like my body was falling apart. Oh, man, I remember the day, as is, uh, if you're eating something, listener, pause. I'm not going to go too graphic, but still, I know how some people are. Um, I remember the day when I, I could not ingest buffalo sauce without repercussions anymore. And on that day, I went... All right, buddy, I'm going to make you a deal. I won't do this constantly. That's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> and my body was like, whatever, dude, it's your ass. <laughs> I remember it was, for me, it was the day when I woke up and I hadn't really done anything the previous day, but because I had mowed the lawn, I wanted to die. <laughs> um... But we're old. We're falling apart. We're mean. We're mad old RPG grognards about we things that aren't we that aren't normal grognard things. But we are, and it's still fucking better than high school. Yeah, you know I don't get the grognardy mentality with most things. I I've mentioned this on the podcast before. I constantly do my best to try new things, experience new kinds of music, you know, kinds of video games, movies, TV, whatever. You know, if something is new and hot, instead of being the fucking asshole, it's like, man, it's new, I hate it. Young people like it, so fuck it. Well, you see, here's the thing. Because I do the same thing. Sure. I don't think it's a decision that someone makes. No, yeah. Well, for some people, it's just that they, the new stuff, they try it for a while, and then after a bit, everything new stops being good to them. Like, they listen to new music, and it just doesn't, it doesn't hit the same notes in their brain pan anymore. Well, and here's where I think it's a decision, is I elect to fight that. And I don't mean that I'm sitting there listening to music that I hate on repeat going, you will enjoy this. <laughs> but it's more that I fucking temper my, my expectations and try to keep an open mind instead of going, all right, well, I like Queen. Is this Queen? No, then it's not good. And that happens to a lot of people. It does. And I think most people I think most people just aren't they just haven't been made aware that this is something your brain tricks you into doing. Because your brain is designed to survive. It's not designed to enjoy cool new music and movies. It's designed to not get eaten by tigers. So after a while, your brain goes, Alright, we've been alive this long. Things are Clearly working out. Stick to that. The stuff that you've been doing up to now, that's the good stuff. That's the stuff you want to do because it's work. And it's it's harder to observe in younger people, uh, by which I mean like, you know, in their late 20s, early 30s. Uh, like when me. It's, it's the same shit that happens when you become an old person. When mm. you suddenly become stubbornly stuck in your ways about... Anything. Anything. <clears throat> and your brain crystallizes is what they call it. It's an actual psychological thing. Fucking Google it. Educate yourself. Um, no, like in the good way. I hate that term. <laughs> really, in the good way. Uh, Make okay. this de education. There you go. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, to give it a German accent made it kind of sound threatening. Just look up stuff on the internet, all right? <laughs> Try and learn stuff The, the crystallization day. of your brain when you get old. It's the kind of shit that leads to Alzheimer's and stuff like that. I mean, you can't always prevent it, but it's, you know, keep yourself fresh. Try to accept new things. Don't force yourself to like stuff that's shitty. 
Motherfucker, I don't like that Zayn Malik song. I can go fuck himself. Pillow talk my ass. That video is pretty live. But the fucking song is stupid. I want to tell you, share you a story, listener. When I was young, in my teens, the, the time when I was forming the, you know, stuff was at its best when I was most emotionally vulnerable to it, mm -hmm. portion of my brain, the things I everyone says I should be going back to as I age, I listened to almost exclusively hard rock and heavy metal. That was basically all I listened to. That and, like, really, really hard rap. Like... Like gangster rap. Like gangster rap, like... Notorious B.I.G., like Nas, shit like that. You were heavy big into the, the California rap scene. Yeah, that too. Um, but like heavy, heavy shit. Now, one of my favorite bands is, and I'm not joking here, a like 80s power metal, synth metal, like nerd Mega Man cover art band. That's, that's the Megas, if you look them up and buy their album. I'd appreciate it because that would encourage them to make more music. Same, because genuinely, um, I'm Not the Break Man is one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. Oh, man, it makes you have the tears. My wife doesn't know shit about Mega Man, and we played um, like the songs around I'm Not the Break Man like, right in a row, and she's like, I need to change the station. This is too... Can we skip the next one? And I'm like, but that's the one where it gets good and there's a happy ending. She's like, I can't. <laughs> My heart hurts for this stupid robot. <laughs> um, and I only, I only have that. I only have that in my life because I was willing to try new things. Sure. Um, and and the same goes for fucking RPG systems. Look, if all right, look, motherfucker, and I, I think I mentioned this on the podcast before, but our, our buddy David, um, again, Google has asked Game Master problems. Uh, he he said. I am going to run you a superhero game directly because he heard me say on this fucking podcast that I didn't want to play a fucking superhero game. I believe my exact phrasing was, if you came to me right now and said, hey, we're going to play a superhero game, I wouldn't know what the fuck to play. And then he said, oh, that sounds like a fun time. Let's yeah, do that. Challenge accepted. And you know what, motherfucker? I came up with an awful character. And that campaign didn't last three sessions. Boy was doing his damnedest. All credit. I came up with a really good character with a cool story arc that I really wanted to play. She was super awesome, and she was like, and I'm mad, but it is what it is. But we continue to try. We try new shit. We try mm -hmm. shit like Beyond the Wall and other adventures. It's important not to stagnate. Even yeah. if you found something you like, it don't hurt you nothing to try something new. All you're going to do is waste some time. And it might be the most finite resource, but you have no clue how much you have. And me, for my money, in every weird food concoction I waste cash on, for every game I try out and go, hmm, shouldn't have bought that. For every fucking movie I pull up on Netflix and go, this is the worst garbage I have ever seen. I would have rather tried it and had a horrible experience to know than to rest on my laurels and not enjoy the world. Period. End of story. Life philosophy, role-playing games, dice, ultimate dragon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, there's nowhere to go from there. <laughs> Fucking everything's better when nerds talk about it. Fuck it, let's get hardcore!